Howdy, Mike Morton here, Program Manager on the Visual Studio team. My team typically works on the container tools inside of Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. But today I'm going to show you something a little different. This uh, feature I'm going to show you is great for you .NET Core developers that are using Visual Studio. So let me just go ahead and jump right in and show you what this is. Uh, I have a new uh, ASP.NET Core application that I created. I'm just going to open up the index page here and add a little snippet to this. And we'll let IntelliSense help me here. And basically what I'll show is I'm just going to print out the OS version. So I'll go ahead and click uh, to debug this in IS Express. And my application will start up. And you'll see that we'll print out the OS version, which as expected is Microsoft Windows NT. Basically we're running in Windows. But often when you're building a .NET Core application, your target environment will be a Linux uh, machine. So one way to do that is to use container debugging. Uh, and that's great. And that works uh, extremely well for many situations. But we've created a lighter weight scenario. If I go here now in the drop down, you'll see I have an option to use WSL2 to debug my .NET Core application in. So if I just switch that debug target and go ahead and click on the green arrow to start debugging again, what you'll see is when my application starts up, that environment OS version is actually a Linux environment. We're debugging from Windows inside of a Linux distribution inside of WSL2. So I can have that great productivity of Visual Studio, but I can also test my application right inside of Linux. What uh, we actually happens when you select that WSL2 is you'll see we uh, update our launch settings and we add an additional launch setting for WSL2. And you'll notice here the distribution name by default is left blank. I can actually set that to a specific distribution name if I want. Otherwise, if you leave it blank, we'll go ahead and use the default distribution that you've set up on your machine. If needed, you can actually have multiple launch targets if you'd like. So I'll go ahead and copy that, and I'll put a comma there and just paste in a second version here. And what I'll do is I'll set this to Debian, which is not my default, and then I'll set the, that's just the friendly name, and then I'll set the distribution name also to Debian. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could set this one, because I know my default is Ubuntu, I could set that to Ubuntu if I wanted to. Uh, and by leaving this blank, again, we'll use the default uh, distribution. Uh, if I go ahead and save that now, you'll see up here in my dropdown, I now have a misspelled Ubuntu. We'll go ahead and fix that real quick. Save that again, and we'll see that I have Ubuntu and Debian. So let's go ahead and switch to Debian. And just to show you that debugging works, let me go ahead and set a breakpoint there, and we'll go ahead and start the debugger. And, and this time our tools will uh, do the, the Linux debugging inside the Debian um, distro rather than the Ubuntu distro. And here you can see that we have our Linux environment as expected. I can hit continue and of course I'm debugging inside of Linux. If you'd like to try out the new WSL2 debugging, head on over to the Visual Studio extension gallery or the marketplace and install the .NET Core debugging with WSL2. It's currently in preview and we'd love to get your feedback. So if you don't mind, go ahead and click download and then when you restart Visual Studio, you'll be presented with the WSL2 options like I showed you here today. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great day.